Good morning, Mount Olivet family. Glad you could be here with me today as we continue our walk through Pentecost, as we continue to push towards the Advent season. It is the middle of July. Yes, it is hot. Yes, I know we're not thinking about it. We celebrated Christmas in July last year, or excuse me, last Sunday. This, it's been so long of a week, it feels like it's been a year already. But today we gather to celebrate our new covenant. One of the things about the Methodist Church is that on the first Sunday of July, when we welcome new pastors, we begin a new covenant with them. When we welcome returning pastors, we renew a covenant with them. So today, let's look at that new covenant we have, not just with one another, not just with pastors and churches, but with ourself and with our Savior. So our Old Testament passage today is Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 through 26, as we look at the birth of Jacob and Esau. Our prayer psalm today is Psalm 65, and our New Testament passage today will be the entirety of Hebrews chapter 8. But before we get into any of that, let us begin with a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you. We lift you up today. Prepare us for the words you have as we celebrate our covenant with you, with our Savior, Christ, but most importantly, with one another in the work of the ministries you have called us to do. We ask all this in your most gracious name. Amen. So Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 through 26. These are the generations of Isaac. Abraham's son. Abraham fathered Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Armenian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Armenian, to be his wife. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. The children struggled together within her. And she said, if it is thus, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. When her days to give birth were completed, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy cloak. So they called his name Esau. After his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks. Our prayer psalm today is Psalm 65, and it is to the choir master. It is a psalm of David titled, O God of Our Salvation. Now, at any time, please feel free to pause, take time, and seek God in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests or concerns or joys or praises, please share them with us. You can call the church. If no one's here, you can leave them as a voicemail. You can email them to myself or Karen, the office manager. Or you can leave them as a comment here on Facebook or YouTube, however you're watching this. Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation. The hope of all the ends of the earth and of the fat, <clears throat> excuse me, farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, 
the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain. For so you have prepared it. Your water its furrows abundant. <clears throat> Excuse me. You water its furrows abundantly. Settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the earth with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Again, please feel free to pause, take time, and seek God in prayer. Our New Testament passage today comes from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8. As we look at Jesus, our high priest of the covenant, and how we have a covenant, not just with him, not just with others, but with ourselves. And we have a new covenant each and every day. So beginning in verse 1 of chapter 8, we read, Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the holy places, in the true tent that the Lord set up, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Thus, it is necessary for the priest also to have something to offer. Now, if we hear, <clears throat> excuse me, if we, excuse me, now if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the hev heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God saying, see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he meditates, excuse me, mediates is better. Since it is enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for the second. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord when I establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, for they did not continue in my covenant. And so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they will not teach, and excuse me, and they shall not teach each one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and remember their sins no more. And speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. And what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks. So in this passage, we see the author of Hebrews telling us of the covenant that God is making with us. So throughout the Bible, we see many different covenants. The very first one being in the book of Genesis, when God passes through the blood that is made of the animal skins that are covering Adam and Eve. 
And then we see all the punishments and reconciliations and requirements thereof that man must toil the land from dust they were created to dust they shall return, all of that. And then we see the covenant made with Noah in the ark. Then we see the covenant made with Abraham and Isaac and all of that. Then we get to the covenant made with Christ. But we see this here, and it says a better covenant. Does that annul the covenant we have with Christ? Because every time there's a covenant, it's supposed to annul the first one, correct? But what we're seeing here, when you think about it, is just a renewal of the covenant. The ones made in the Old Testament were to strengthen each other. The one made with Adam and Eve was because they disobeyed in the garden. The one made with a, excuse me, Noah was because humanity need to be restored. They strengthened. Each time we see a covenant, it's strengthening the old one. Here in the New Testament, it's renewing their covenants. Think of it, if you will, a vow renewal. You're not getting rid of the vows you did in your marriage ceremony. You're strengthening them. The author of Hebrews is telling us to renew our vows we made. Not get rid of the old, but strengthen them. Now, who are we strengthening them with, if you will? Well, when you think about our daily lives, we interact with so many people. As I sit here recording this, we just had the sandwich club come in. They made their sandwiches. They're taking them over to Love, Inc. right now. So we strengthen them with the community. Each and every week, they strengthen their vows with Love, Inc. Love, Inc. strengthen their vows with the community. In fact, on August 6th, we'll have Love, Inc. coming here to strengthen their vows with us by bringing the word. Pastor Miguel and their new pastor, Pastor Jeremy, will be bringing the message in my absence. We strengthen our vows with one another. Each and every day we renew our covenant with Christ. We strengthen our vows with him through prayer, meditation, fasting. All of this because of what it says here in the passage. When the author of Hebrews talks about a better covenant, he's not talking about a replacement of the one we had before. He's talking about a strengthening. So it's not necessarily a new covenant, but it's a strengthening of the covenant. When you think about it in the terms of a house, I've been doing recently work on my late father-in-law's house, working with contractors, cleaners, all of that. If there's an issue with the foundation, there's two ways you can go about it. You can jack up the house and tear out the entire old foundation, put a new one in. Or you can secure the house and reinforce the foundation. We as believers aren't going to tear down our foundation because we know our, what our foundation is. Our foundation is Christ. We need to secure our foundation, though. Look what it says in this passage. It says he did, says he came to put the law in our minds and write them on our hearts that he will be our God and we shall be his people. It's to establish and continue that covenant. Each and every day, he lifts us up, he encourages us, and he strengthens that covenant. Now, how do we do that? Look what it says in verse 6. Better promises. Christ gave us better promises than what we had in the Old Testament. Remember, when you look at the covenants of the Old Testament, we had to do sacrifices. The priest had to go into the Holy of Holies with the sacrifices. And if he had an issue, he was dragged out because he was struck dead. But the sacrifices had to be of a certain way at a certain time. But we no longer have to do that. We have the better promises. 
we now have the covenant with Christ who made the sacrifice for all. So let us go through each and every day taking that covenant with us, strengthening it through our prayer, through our fasting, through our meditation, through our interactions with one another. And in doing so, let us strengthen and encourage one another that by doing so, we lift up and support one another and strengthen their covenant. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you. We lift you up today. That, Father, let our covenant with you be encouraging and uplifting so that others will be strengthened with you. We ask all this in your most holy name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope wherever you are, you are safe, you are healthy, and that God has blessed you in some way today. Take care.